Ken Cook Show. Many of you often ask me, what do Greek Chinese cook eat for dinner? So I conduct a scientific survey. And the response has been absolutely tremendous. And I receive a whole bag of mail. <laughs> Unbelievably <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> One, I sent out 5,000 questionnaires to chef all over the world. Oh, this is from Chef Chen. Dear Martin, your survey is a great idea. Maybe next time you can include a return postage. <laughs> As for my favorite dish, I really like a pizza with lots of pepperoni and anchovy. Sincerely, Chef Chen. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, this is also. P.S. Please don't mention my name. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, me, Chef Chen. I won't do that next time. But seriously, people who spend a lot of time in the kitchen, like me and you, many of you, cooking and every day, whether it's in a restaurant at home, you don't feel like having very heavy, rich, complicated dish. You want something light and simple, something nutritious, like this particular dish I'm going to show you, pork spare rib with black bean sauce. It's very easy to do. In fact, you can order this in a dim sum restaurant, a little plate. But this is also a main dish. You start with spare rib like this, see, whole slab. And then you can cut it. Now, I want to show you, it's very important. When you open the back side, all you should do is trim this off, OK? Trim this off like this. And if you have any excess fat, also trim it off like this. Look at this. Trim this off. Trim this off. And then you can cut into one, two, like this. Please come out. <laughs> Sometimes it gets stuck. So all you have to do is cut along the rib. OK? Cut along the rib. And if it doesn't come out, you chop it. And then you set it aside. This is all your rib. You, I should have approximately two pieces per person, per guest. After that, you should bring a, boiling, a pot of boiling water to a boil, and you quickly blanch this. The idea of doing that is you let it shrink and shrink the fat a little bit. If there's any, you kind of trim it off. And then, and you heat up your wok. I'm going to heat up my wok, OK? And then, let me remove these. And then, the next step I want to show you is we're going to get some Black beans. This is salted black bean. It's also called fermented black beans and have been fermenting for about 20 years. Now it's nice and mellow. You smell it. Wow. <laughs> Aromatic. With this, it normally comes in a bag like this. Look at this. Black beans. You gotta read it. This is Dao Si, salted black bean. Okay. To go along with this, you need a tiny bit of ginger and garlic. The idea of this is to get yourself in the right mood. Can you imagine how boring? <laughs> I'm going to chop some ginger. Hey, see? Put them all together. Put it right here. Garlic. Garlic. See this? See, this is how you do it. Mince all this and get this all ready. Now, you have black salted black bean, Chinese called Dao Si. Heat up this wok, put about two teaspoons at the most of oil, and then you use a spatula, and then you brown this, OK? Brown this. Oh, look at this. If you do this at home, you might want to ask the butcher to cut it in half. So it's about three inches rather than this long. And then you brown it on both sides. Look at this. Brown this. When it's long like this, it's very hard to turn them around. But it's easier to eat. I remember, a lot of people don't understand why the Chinese chef love this. Because in China, when you're a good chef, your food tastes so wonderful. By the time the guests finish it up, there's no left over. So all that's left is bone. So the Chinese chef have developed a taste for bones. This is very... 
I know, I know a lot of you like bones. And then, the next thing is, I am going to put some broth. Homemade. Wow, look at this hot stuff. I'm going to braise this. In this bracing sauce, you have some cooking wine, soy sauce, and broth, OK? And then, some green onion, about one or two stalks. And then, if you want, you can also put some stock. Black beans, let it brace. Let it brace. Or you can crush it a little bit like this, let it brace. Why are you bracing this? Let me remove these, because I don't need this anymore. We're going to cover it up and let it brace. Why I'm bracing this? I want to show you how to take care of wok. Now, everybody know a wok is one of the most important cooking utensils in the Chinese kitchen. You use the wok for steaming, for stir frying, for deep frying, for practically all the cooking chores. So it's very important to know how to take care of the wok. There are all kinds of wok in the market. A wok like this, this is made from hard anodized. You don't have to season it. Never rust. You can use any spatula, it doesn't scratch. Okay? But there are also woks like this. It is non-stick. This is very important for those who are diet conscious, that you're concerned about intake of calorie. Then you use this, because all you need is about half a teaspoon to two teaspoons of oil. But if you have a wok like this, this is a wonderful, regular steel wok. This way, you have to season the wok. First, you got to use a hot soapy water to clean up inside and out, get rid of the industrial oil. And then, the next step is you heat it up over medium-high heat, and you put a tiny, tiny bit, about a teaspoon of oil, okay? And then, you move this with a paper towel. Make sure to hold on to it like this, and you do it for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. Now, it takes a while, because you got to heat it up and let the oil bake into it, because when you heat up this, carbon steel wok, the pores open up and the oil bake into it and fill in this and make it a nice smooth cooking surface so it won't stick anymore. When it's done, it should look like this. See, this is a well seasoned wok. I have used this <laughs> since 1905. <laughs> you see? Now, I want to show you actually this already turning brown. Can you see? Everybody see this? It's already turning brown. All you have to do is do about twice or three times, okay? When it's done, we will remove these. Now, somebody said, what happened if the wok is not seasoned properly or rusted? If the wok rusted like this, you're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> but at least one thing is good because you don't have to take any iron peel anymore because a lot of iron. <laughs> or you can use this as a flowering pot. Let me come back and check my ribs. Wow, look at this. This is marvelous. This looks really, really good. And then when it's done, normally you should do this long enough because you want to make sure the pork is properly cooked. And then when it's done, you use a tongue and you get one of these nice surfing platter and you pick it up. This way, everybody can enjoy. Look at how beautiful this dish is. You see this? Very easy to do. It looks so good. If I don't watch out, by the time I come back, only the bone left. So, the next dish I want to show you is another wonderful dish. Most of the chef like it. As I said, when you work in the kitchen for so long, you don't really need anything rich, complicated, but something simple. This, I call it water lily egg. It's very velvety, very simple, and all you need is four eggs. All you need is four eggs, okay? The idea of having four eggs is a lot of people always ask, said, don't put all your eggs in one basket, but it's okay <laughs> to put in a bowl. <laughs> Look at this. Now in China, they don't have fancy stuff, the wood, so they use this to beat the egg. Look at this. By the time you finish, you burn out 16,000 calories. <laughs> wow, I am burning up. <laughs> now, 
The important thing is not only you use the egg, you should also use a tiny bit of water. Or you can use some chicken broth. Let's put about four eggs and about one tiny, tiny bit of green onion. If you want, put a tiny bit of chopped green onion on top. You can put it in now, you can put it in later. Also use a tiny, tiny bit of dry sherry, dry sherry, to give a little hangover. <laughs> and also a tiny bit of oil, one little teaspoon of oil, and also a tiny bit of salt, salt and white pepper. And then I use approximately one and a half cup or less broth, okay? Put it right over here, and then you put it into this uh, heat proof dish, like that, and let it steam, okay? It's very important. Let me put this over here and heat up this. Now it's very, very important to make sure you have some water over here so you can steam it. Let me uh, get some water. Ah, let me get some water over here so we can steam this. This is a traditional Chinese bowl. All you need is about four cups, okay? And you put this in a bamboo steamer. If you don't have a bamboo steamer, all you have to do is put two pairs of chopstick, tic tac dough, and put it right on top of the wok. And then you can steam this, okay? Steam this for approximately five to seven minutes and check it out. When it's done, it should look like this. I want to show you. It should look so gorgeous. You see this? And then what you're going to do is you can garnish this with a tiny bit of little pepper. I want to show you how to do it so everybody can see. You can garnish this with a little red, pep red pepper like this. After you do this, you put in ice water and then it will open up like a little flower. Then you can garnish it over here. Now, traditionally, you can also add a tiny bit of minced chicken or beef or pork or mushroom, but we are on a tight budget here. So I'm gonna save all the chicken and mushroom for the next show. So I'm gonna put this around. The next one is I wanna show you is very, very wonderful. I wanna show you a dish that the chef loved this. It's simple, easy, and it's wonderful. Here, I have a pot of boiling water here. And this is Chinese broccoli. See, this is Chinese broccoli. And in order to make it easier to cook, what I do is, see this is a lot skinnier than the stem. So what I did is I go like this, see this? And I go like this and I open it up so this way it is a lot easier to cook. So it would not be overcooked on one side and undercooked on this side. When it's all ready, I put a teeny tiny bit of oil into this little pot to give that nice glaze. And then put a tiny bit of salt Look at this, to give some flavor. And then I put all of these right over here. It's very, basically, you are blanching this. Now this is very, very easy to do. When it's done, you can use a chopstick. Chopstick is not only a great serving utensil, also a good cooking utensil. You make sure you let it cook properly. When it's done, you get a plate, this is very easy to do. Now, let me show you. When it's done, you use a chopstick, laid it out like this, laid it out like this. It takes about three minutes to cook. And we have been doing this for exactly three minutes, believe it or not. <laughs> we'll put it over here. Now, of course, when you do it at home, you can do it with a tongue. This would drive you nuts. I am <laughs> developing my patient here. Now, okay, that's good. This is almost ready. And when it's almost ready, or when it's, if you want to stop the cooking, all you have to do is drain it through, run it through cold water. Stop the cooking so it stay nice and green and tender. Don't overcook. If you overcook it, you kill the darn thing. Put a tiny bit of hot oil. This is hot oil. And then put a tiny bit of sesame seed oil and a tiny bit of oyster flavor sauce. Now, what I have for you is wonderful Chinese broccoli with oyster flavor sauce and water lily egg.
to be a great Chinese cook, you need more than just good look. You need to master the tool of the trade. So let me show you a few of the cooking utensils that they actually use in a Chinese restaurant. Here, they have different kind of wok. This is 16 inches, and this is 18 inches, and this is 24 inches. And of course, the most functional one is this 14 inches wok that you can use. Now also, if you are cooking for one, they even have something like baby wok, one handle. <laughs> this is for the people that they cook for one. Now here, we also want to show you the bamboo steamer that they use in restaurant. When you go to a dim sum restaurant, they have bamboo steamer. It looks like this. See this? What they do is they put all the little baby steamers all over there. Then you have ha gao, siu mai, chicken feet, all kind of stuff, my favorite. Then you cover this up and you put all of them and steam a whole bunch at the same time. Even this come with different size. They come with either making ba with bamboo or stainless steel like this or they have a little baby one like this from Hunan. They make this, isn't that cute? Baby bamboo steamer. <laughs> now, of course, the most functional one is a 12 inches bamboo steamer that you can use at home. Look at this. When you use this, you put water in a 14 inches wok or 16 inches wok, and then you put this right on top. And then you can have two or three of these. You can cook two or three of these at the same time. This is just a lid. When it's done, you lift it up, never lift it up like this until, unless you want a steam bath. You always lift it up on the other side. And then when you pick up things, you, all you have to do is little this, the roll bug, and lift it up like this, small dish, medium dish, large dish, and you just <laughs> hold on to it and pick it up. <laughs> now, I am going to show you the chef and other favorite dish, which is served in a lot of restaurants after the restaurant is closed after a hard day's work. This is what they're going to use. I'm going to show you how to do a beef and bean curd delight. And it's so easy to do. I started out with approximately three quarter pound of beef. Even half a pound is good enough. And then, this is very important to make sure when you cut beef, make sure you cut it across the grain. Don't cut it along the grain. If you cut it along the grain, it takes about two and a half hours to chew the darn thing up. Okay, always cut it like this. First, you see how I do it, look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see this? Put it right here, okay? Slow motion. One, two, three. <laughs> and then, please transfer like this. You see how I move my knife? If you have a lot of people, and that's all the beef you have, what are you gonna do? You make it into three slices. Look at this. I cannot. One. Look at this. Two. Wow. I am nervous. <laughs> One more. Depends on how many people you have. Wow. Look at this. And then you can actually have thin slices like this. Look at this. Very thin slices. Very, very thin slices. And then you stack them all up and you go one, two, three. That means all of a sudden you have more pieces of beef. Now, normally when you cut beef, after you cut it, let's cut them up, cut them up, cut them up, cut them up. And then <laughs> let me show you how to transfer. Watch. Right now, let's see, you see here. You see how I do it? <laughs> now look. <laughs> Carefully. One, two, three. Hey! <laughs> see that? Very, very easy. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to heat up my wok. I'm going to do stir-fried beef and bean curd. There are all kinds of bean curd. There are firm bean curd, medium firm bean curd, and soft bean curd, OK? This is firm bean curd. See this? It can actually turn them around. <laughs> you can put it this way, or this way, or this way, or this way, or this way. <laughs> Nobody cares. If it's firm bean curd, it's already fallen into 6,000 pieces. Cut it up, slices, set this aside, cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, cut it up. More people, cut it up, 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 set it aside, and I put it over here. Now, this particular dish is very easy to do. And all I have to do is, let me show you, heat up the wok. Use approximately 
Now, when you do wall cooking, the most important thing is make sure you heat up the wall first. Then you put the oil in. Now the wok is hot, I put the oil in. Step number one, move them around. Once again, to keep up the tradition of the Yang Ken Cook Show, let us all get excited. First of all, <laughs> mince ginger, put it over here. Marinate the beef for a little while. You can use a chopstick to mix this up. And then put them all in. What you have is about one tablespoon of soy sauce and about half a teaspoon of white pepper and about a teaspoon to one and a half teaspoon of cornstarch. Now a lot of people ask, Martin, why do you use cornstarch? Cornstarch helps to seal in the juice, give a nice glaze to your beef, and also give a nice smooth texture. And you stir, stir. You turn this, why you turn it like this? Why you don't just go one, two? Because you want to allow uniform cooking. And also, the important thing is, you do not overcook one piece and undercook another piece. Otherwise, it will get tough. Now, the firm bean curd is wonderful because it can take the heat. It would not fall to pieces. And you cannot, you don't have to worry about if you overcook it. Never worry about tough bean curd. But when the beef is overcooked, you have tough beef in one dish. You cannot have two tough characters, you see? Move them around, put all these tofu in. Look at this. Tofu, wow, look at this. Put the tofu in and put a tiny, tiny bit of green onion. Stir. Look at this. I move my walk around. I move my walk around. And then you do the last touch up, put some seasoning. I use about a quarter of a cup of chicken broth, about one tablespoon to two tablespoons of dry sherry. Wow, look at this. Make a lot of sauce. And then use about two tablespoons or so of oyster flavor sauce. And then we're gonna thicken it up. And if you want, you can also use a tiny bit of black pepper. When it's done, we remove these. We don't need this anymore. And then thicken it up. I have, once again, get ready a tiny, tiny bit of cornstarch solution. One portion of cornstarch to three portion of water. Let's mix them all up. One, put it all right in here. Take a break, stir. Don't just go like this because this is too dry. So you should never, never put the cornstarch around like this because it's too hot and too dry. It will turn into glue instead of a sauce. So you should always put it where the boiling liquid is. Look at this. Can everybody see? Boiling liquid is right here. I put it in and I stir, okay? Once again, this is very simple. This four ounces of tofu only have about 25 uh, calories or so of, uh, about 90 calories of calorie. And a lot of protein, good quality protein, and yet very, very nutritious. A lot of calcium, so it's good for you when it's done. All you have to do is move these and set this aside. Look, I want to show you how wonderful this would look. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Do you think you would like to eat? Look at this. And it's so delicious. As I said, Greek dishes doesn't have to be complicated, doesn't have to be expensive. Then you can use a little knife. If you want to make it nice and colorful, all you have to do is get a little paring knife, get a little nice red bell pepper, and you cut it into little pieces like this. Put in ice water, or you can put it in the fridge, and you can put it over like this, and the dish looks very, very wonderful. Now today, I really enjoy having you all in the studio, and also you at home. And I hope all of you go home and get a chance to try this. Now, you all know what 
the Chinese chef like for their dinner? Simple, nutritious, light, and easy. By now, you're all great Chinese chef. So please write to me and tell me what is your great dish and favorite dish, and put the post office to work. <laughs> if Yang can cook, so can you try this. <laughs>